Friday, Peterson Saturday? Yeah, and then TBA on Sunday. That could be uh, Crook or Mercer or Stringer. I'm not sure. It depends on what we need to get through Friday and Saturday. For the possibility to come out of the bullpen on Friday, Saturday then? Yeah. Okay, yeah. These guys can work? Yep. And then we've, you know, we've added a Monday, Tuesday mm -hmm. series, so not that we're putting that ahead of anything with the ASU series, but uh, with five games in five days, we're going to have to try to figure out how to maximize the quality of that. The Stringer and Mercer give you, I mean, they've both kind of extended a little bit more lately. Does that give you kind of some more innings you feel like, instead of having to go Johnny Allstaff on like those off day ones, you can kind of yeah. maybe extend those guys a yeah. bit more? Yeah, that was kind of the intent. A little bit of the intent, but also his excellence and uh, Stringer's effort uh, more you know, in San Diego. And not my wildest dreams, and I think he'd get to the eight. And, uh, he's so efficient with his pitches. And Evan Mercer did a nice job in relief uh, for the 85 pitches, I think it was. And, uh, I think he's bounced back from that pretty well. So, you know, we haven't really lost confidence in Brooke other than. I guess we have a little bit because he's given up those crazy perfect numbers early and not been able to get out of the first and can't continue to try to chase that. So I guess in a perfect world, either he goes Sunday and gets off to good start and go up to one of the two you know, Monday or Tuesday starts and gets off to good start and revisit that for the following. He's got five days in a row. I mean, that can. That almost got to make you kind of manage your bullpen a little different during conference, or does that just deal with conference and then deal with the rest of it later? Deal with conference, yeah. yeah. We, we knew this could potentially be a challenging effort against Gonzaga. They they don't have a series that weekend. They're out of school. Uh, it's one of the reasons that they were able to come here. Um, they're, they're good, from what I understand. They've got a good RPI, and so to, for makeup games, it, it's going to be challenging because they potentially don't have to get farther, uh, too far down the pitching staff down. And they're fresh and we're coming back from Arizona, which is always a tough trip. And landing late, Portland, all these kind of things. Challenging a little bit on Monday for coming back from the trip. And, uh, I've already kind of addressed it with my team and we'll address it on Monday. You know, first things first, we've got to get through a very difficult series on Arizona State. And then it can affect you. And then from two days off before going back into the ball, yeah. you can be something on the back end you got to make sure so also you don't tax too much to, to affect you. Yeah, that's right. And, and the risk reward, you know, our body of work outside of conference is not spectacular. We felt like we had very little to lose in the, in the uh, at large bid, and it comes down to that, although we're not out of the conference race yet. Felt like it was worth it. We, uh, we helped. Uh, for the trip and Zaga coming here instead of going there and missing school and doing all those things that are even more taxing. So uh, they needed the games, we needed the games, and we knew that it was probably a little bit of a disadvantage for us, but we really wanted to take that chance. Take in a couple games in case you get in the large bit yeah. to, to give you a couple more to catch up. Yeah, and if you're, if you're worthy of beating a good club like Zaga, they end up contending and see that that's that's something going to a good two game series I guess. Do you spin these midweek games as maybe an opportunity for pitchers or hitters or is it more of a focus on not taxing you know your your bulk so it's an opportunity and, and yeah uh, it worked against us in the Monday Beaver game uh, that we had used Negosi three days in a row uh, to get through that series and uh, so we were unable to use him late in the game. The second time we played him, we were able to use him. And anybody but him on the mound, we might still be playing that game. We might have lost that game. So, uh, but you know, again, it's an opportunity for guys. Uh, that if they go sick and worn, and our top line bullpen is not ready, then we have to go farther down. And as I've said before, we don't recruit crummy players. And uh, yeah, maybe a little disadvantage, but we're not going to use that as an excuse if we get beat. We have. We have good players, and if we can't beat Gonzaga or anybody else with our players, whether they're rested or tired, that, that's our fault. And uh, we'll see what happens. Is the uh, Sunday decision going to come after the game on, on Saturday, more yeah. than likely? Yeah. Bennett, due to get his shot, kind of had to wait. What did you 
see from him coming into that that you know, felt like maybe he was ready to go? Uh, toughness. Um, you know, he had spurts in the fall that uh, he was one of the toughest outs that I had to try to get out when we were scrimmaging. Um, he might have hit him and Casser's opportunity might have been a little bit of a deep ball, yeah. but the other guys were not performing. Some of their uh, Bennett's hitting style and Casser's hitting style were what we were looking for from the other guys. Keep the, the stroke in the zone longer, use the whole field. Uh, maybe somebody would say he's got a long stroke or a uh, slow back sometimes. But, you know, I think you know, if, you, if you keep the bat in the hitting zone a long time, it might not be that low line drive with backspin, but it's still a line drive somewhere. Mm -hmm. And immediately, both those guys, when they went in, they did that, you know, and it was actually healthy for the other guys. It became contagious on the positive side. So, not that I'm brilliant, or any of the coaches are brilliant, but those guys were good examples of what we've been trying to get to with those other guys all along. We're talking about toughness, I guess, doesn't surprise you. Wrestling no. And, linebacker type good football. And I would tell you that uh, out of the privilege that I've had to coach guys like J.B. Bennett, I call him J.B. because my dad's name is J.B. We call him Jake, Jake Bennett. We call him Sawdoff. We have two Jake Bennett, so we have yeah. to, uh, to coach Sawdoff uh, or wrestler, baseball combinations, good combination. The two toughest sports, uh, you know, there's all sports are difficult in their own way. But I'd say mentally and physically, the two toughest sports that I'm aware of are wrestling and water polo. And if a guy can compete as a wrestler, uh, he's a tough kid. Jake a tough kid. What does Nagozik like in practice? Is he one of the louder guys? Is he a quiet worker? No, he's a quiet worker. He's, uh, I think he's got everybody's attention and respect because of the way he goes about his business. and. Uh, he can lead with a, a, a soft fist, so to speak, and uh, I do know that he's not afraid to speak up, uh, but he's not a rah-rah guy. He's not one of those guys that, that's chirping all the time, and I think, you know, whether you're a parent or a coach or a leadership guy, I think if you pick your spots to try to correct and encourage, I think you're probably going to get more out of the person you're talking to than if it's all the time. You know, you're always in here children's business or your player's business and they've got to learn how to grow up themselves sometimes and, and Nagosik has a good balance in that. Seems like a pretty intense guy. Would you say that's true about his personality? Yeah, I think he comes from a tough family. His dad's a fireman. His, his brother was a good good football player. And they took offense to one of the players from UCLA who was showboating, uh, flipping the bat and different things like that. And they took it personal and Actually, Stephen went in and got to pitch against that particular player. And, uh, all he wanted to do was throw as hard as he could to jam the guy. So he got a little out of control wanting to pitch that guy. But that's kind of – there's no situation that Nogo says, oh, that's too tough for me. But in fact, it's very rare that ever I asked him, are you good enough to pitch an inning today? And, I don't know if he's ever said no, Coach. I'm a little tight. I, I, he can always give me something, and sometimes I need to be the adult. A lot of the closers are kind of adrenaline junkies. Do you think that intensity kind of comes with the job he has? Yeah, I think it, it serves a, a, a closer, especially, to want to have that microphone in the front of the course line and want to be in there when the game's on the line and not want to do it for himself, but want to do it for the team. He's the, the ultimate tough team player in my mind, Steve Negosi. Good, all right.